there you go. You know, they wanted to change that and call it the Willis Tower or some shit because everybody's a whore these days, I guess, you know? So I, I guess the, the some company named Willis, I don't know, what do they sell? Life insurance or some bullshit? I don't know. Anyway, they bought it. They bought the naming rights. Who cares? Doesn't apply to my life. I don't give a fuck. Uh, regardless, let's talk about some plants over here. Now, here's another spot I've been coming for 20 years, all right? And this tree's pretty amazing because it's actually in the same family as cannabis. This is Celtis occidentalis. Oh, it looks like it's got some galls under there, too. wonder what species that is. I have to look that up. Those are galls. Anytime you see... Looks like they're probably some kind of wasp galls. Anytime you see some shit like that, it's normally galls. Uh, it could be a fungus, too. I mean, this is not a fungus. It's obviously a gall. But I'm just saying, in general, if, you're, if you don't know what you're looking at, you're not a plant person, but you see some weird shit on the underside of a leaf, you know, chances are it's going to be a gall. Uh, lots of different uh, plants get them. They normally get them on the inside of leaves. It's basically just where the, the tissue swells. Uh, I don't know if it's an inflammatory response, if you could call it that or not. But there's a bug in there is the point. There's a bug in there. It'll eat all that stuff. The bug's protected while it's out. And then it uh, once that falls off, uh, not once it falls off, once the bug matures, it breaks out of there and that thing is uh, done. That'll be, the, you know, once these leaves fall off in the fall, it'll be over anyway. This is Celtis occidentalis. Same family as uh, cannabis. Uh, common name is, I think it's hackberry or something, I don't know. But uh, it's just, you know, it's doing well on its own here on the side of this fucking railroad embankment. Of course, you know, when this railroad embankment was put together 90 to 100 years ago, probably longer than that, it was all barren, there was nothing growing here. What's filled in here is just uh, a combination of uh, the native flora and then some uh, invasives. You can see you got a nice cottonwood over there. Oh, look at it, sunset over there. The, in the beautiful Midwest prairie sky. Prairie, I mean, concrete toilet. But uh, then over here you got, well, this guy I think is uh, one of the uh, notorious Siberian elms. See, it looks, it's got that very dentate leaf structure like an elm, except the leaves are tiny. That's a non-native, you know? That's a non-native tree. Like I said, you got a mix of some very uh, uh, beautiful native trees and then some uh, very... Uh, ecologically successful trees that just kind of exploit they're exploitative but that, that I guess they don't get too out of control they can but uh, anyway there's Atlantis altissima speaking of invasives again but over here you got a species of uh, Fraxinus which is notable because a lot of these are dying off see I mean look at that I don't know if that's the uh, emerald ash borer anyway start with the emerald ash borer it's a invasive insect brought over here I believe it's either from Europe or Asia. I'm pretty sure it's from er Europe. And, uh, of course, just like Cryphonetria parasitica, the chestnut fungus, it's an invasive species that uh, just wipe, is wiping out ash trees wholesale. And many of them, most of them don't display any resistance whatsoever. So like Cryphonetria parasitica, which probably nobody watching this uh, knows that it was such a, or has ever seen it in its full glory when it was a part, a staple of the ecosystem out east. But, you know, Cryphonectra parasitica, chestnut blight was a fungus from Asia. Uh, trees over there are resistant to it because they evolved with it. Out here, there's no resistance because, you know, that they're 50 million years, however many, 25, 30, 40 million years of evolving without that parasite there. They don't, uh, they can't, uh, they can't digest the oxalic acid that the Cryphonectra parasitica fungus produces so the chestnut trees all died they're working on gene resistance i guess they got one done now it's just a matter of reintroducing it into the ecosystem and all they had to do is tweak one or two genes and get the tree to produce or uh, enzymes that break down that oxalic oxalic acid that the cryphonectary fungus produces and uh you know and that's what the chinese chestnut does which is resistant to that cryphonectary anyway long story short invasive species are real if you don't believe in it you're an asshole i'll kick you in the next time i see you uh, so no burrito for you, I'll kick you in the balls. But uh, here you go, Fraxinus, and I believe this is, uh, is the Pennsylvanica or Americana. Don't know my uh, Midwest ashes as well as I should, but a good thing with ashes, you know, at least when you don't see the, uh, the Samaras, the wing, they got those winged Samaras that look like maples, maple seeds, basically. But when, you, when they're not in fruit, you know, almost all ash trees have this general leaf structure. They're pinnate with a terminal leaf at the end, you know? You can't go by it 100% because there's other trees that do that. Walnuts, hickories look similar, but that you know, it's it's normally a good uh, a good thing to rely on. It's a combination of looking at this, looking at the leaf structure, and then looking at the bark. The bark structure on ashes is normally pretty notable, and then of course once you get the fruits, uh, it's a dead shot. You know exactly what it is. Here's the bark on that ash tree. 
So, and, and most of the, the ashes out here have them. But of course, you get ash trees in the desert of Mexico. There's a kind of a, uh, it grows pygmy a lot of time. There's a species of Fraxinus that grows in Utah as well, out in all that red rock stuff, you know, in the desert. It's, uh, you know, a lot of diversity in that, that, uh, that genus. And they're, of course, in the olive family, Oleaceae. Just a wonderful area. I mean, you blend, you know, the mix of dying industry, uh, an absence of people. Uh, the yuppie condos have not yet arrived, you know. There's not like a sparkling glass turd that stands about 15 feet tall down there. Now, you go further down the tracks, you start to run into some of that stuff because I think they feel a little bit safer living out uh, closer to the loop. Well, the swallows, the, the swallows are going nuts, feasting on all the bugs that come out. Look at that. Anyway, so like I was saying, I think the yuppies feel a little closer living down there. You know, out here it's a little rough still, uh, which I, I, I like, you know. I mean, as long as uh, you don't get kids throwing rocks at you, you know how to watch your back a little bit, you'll be fine, you know. But uh, like I said, I've been coming here 20 years. Remember I painted that building when I was about 16 years old. And, uh, you know, we were having a fire down here once. This is why we used to hang out here, because it was a very calm and peaceful place where there weren't a lot of people, you know, and you just... Uh, you could chill. I mean, it's so peaceful out here, you get coyotes. And you can see the coyotes have a very easy time navigating the power line easements and the train tracks. Dining on feral cats, which there are not many around these parts because they don't last too long. Dining on feral cats as well as uh, rabbits and rats. Well, this is a major uh, line that traffics between uh, east and west coast uh, railroads right here. I think I found, I shit you not, That'd be 12 foot tall cannabis plants growing right over there, probably 15 years ago, you know? And then the cops, of course, like used to like to park their paddy wagons over there. They'd hang out and, uh, you know, drink their coffee with a little bit of booze in it, maybe, I don't know. Used to always see them hanging out there, you know, beating people to force confessions out of them. I don't know, I'm just kidding, whatever. <laughs> that would never happen in the city of Chicago. Anyway, I planted some stuff here, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Let's see if it's still there. Well, this is kind of, Sketchy, there you go, there's a mulberry, that's not a native one. Virginia creeper, another vitaceae, remember the, uh, hope there's, maybe there's a wino living down here, I hope I don't startle him. This is a catalpa, I believe, bignoniaceae. Is that what that is here, with those leaves, I don't know what else it could be. Beautiful flowers on these when they're, when they're big. There's, oh look, someone ripped a, oh shit, someone ripped a, uh, grate off of a, uh, boxcar right there. People used to come out here and rob trains too at least it seems like that you'd hear it over the police scanner oh this is a bad one buckthorn this is another bad european invasive i didn't even know these weren't native here until i got older and learned a little bit about botany but they're everywhere and they're a pain in the ass and they get that kind of shiny bark almost looking like they're a stone fruit you know but then of course their namesake the buckthorns these branches that just kind of turn into spines and the plant kind of uses them like that too now i planted a ginkgo somewhere here just for shits and giggles. I don't know where it could be. But that buckthorn takes over, you know, and they've, they've actually done a good job trying to remove a bunch of it. Jesus Christ. Trying to remove a bunch of it. There's a box elder from, uh, from the forest preserves around here. But the problem is, is the birds eat the berries. The birds eat the berries and they spread it, you know. So, you know, you gotta, I don't know, you gotta talk to the birds, I guess. I don't know, get them to... <laughs> There it is, there's that buckthorn. Another good identifying factor, aside from that very shiny uh, and glabrous bark, of course, is that uh, these leaves, like Ceanothus, which they're related to in the Ramnaceae, get these, normally get these three prominent uh, veins on them. I mean, you got more than three veins, of course, but you always have those three prominent veins on the European buckthorn leaves. All right, now, I, I might have to put the camera down to get through some of this shit. Oh, no. Looks like we're experiencing a little bit of eutrophication down here. This has turned into a pit, which I, I'm sure is just uh, lovely with mosquitoes. They've had a lot of rain here lately, though, so that's why this is filled in. Normally, it's not filled in. I think our fire pit used to be down there. You see, there was one of our... That's probably not from us, unless that's 20 years old. I doubt it, but maybe there were some other uh, derelict youths hanging out here recently. I hope so. I have memories once. We were hanging out here having a fire and drinking some beers. And, uh, you know, heard something running into the bushes very fast towards us. And, uh, you know, kind of spooked us out a little bit. We couldn't see that well. But when it did get close enough, we heard it stop 
and turn around and run the other way and it was a coyote there's coyotes in here i've seen them a couple times actually always in the same general kind of uh urban habitat like i said power line easements and uh railroad tracks etc amazing how much that looks like poison ivy that box elder but it's not because you got this second thing of leaves going on you got that second layer of leaves right there you know i don't think any of my trees are still here which is going to piss me off because uh I don't know, you know what, we didn't hang out down there, we hung out over here. Where was their fire pit? I don't think nobody's, I don't think no one's hanging out here no more. It's kind of depressing. But we had a nice fire pit and a little spot, a camp and shit, you know. Nice little spot. All right, there you go, there's our old fire pit. Right near this uh, giant populous deltoides, this eastern cottonwood. Another native species that does uh, pretty, pretty well here in the, uh, the urban wasteland. Can't even find any of the old rocks. I bet they're still there somewhere a little bit. Yeah, we had a lot of good times here. A lot of bullshitting, a lot of storytelling, hanging out, shooting the shit. You know, it was pretty nice. God, that tree is fucking massive. What's this? Looks like an aster of some kind. Those things grow like hell, and of course they produce uh, an inordinate amount of uh, uh, little fluff. That's their seed. They're, that's how they get their seed all around. Oh, it looks like someone came out there to uh, destroy some uh, electronic appliances. That's nice. I like that. I, uh, I myself, uh, I think I threw a VCR player off that uh, train bridge over there once. That was pretty fun. I threw it onto the tracks, and then a uh, train ran over it. Oh, such a beautiful day on the southwest side. Anyway, here's a past the Naka sativa, wild parsnip. There's the leaves of it. This is another plant, obviously. It's already uh, flowered and seeded, and it's doing it's done its thing. It's you know going about to go dormant, but it's got a ton of seed on there, you know. And this is another European import, kind of weedy. There's I believe this is another species of Artemisia, and I believe it's a European one. And then uh, over here. You got Artemisia vulgaris, which you can clearly see. Artemisia is, of course, out of mugwort. You know, it's a very large genus, though, and it's distributed both in Europe and North America, and I believe in Asia, too. Artemisia vulgaris right here. And most of them smell. This one, I, it smells a little bit. You got the buckthorn going nuts. And then, uh, of course, many of you know this plant, uh, of course. <laughs> Same family as that uh, Celtis I just showed you, that hackberry. This is a... Uh, this is wild cannabis, you know, another non-native plant, uh, you know, but it's doing pretty good. I can't tell. Let's see if this is a male or female right now. I can't really tell yet. At least I can't. Some of you probably can. Oh, it looks like it's a female. Yeah, it looks like she's a female. And, uh, you know, it's doing pretty well. So it's, it's crazy to think that this plant right here, of course, same family as hops, same family as that hackberry, uh, is what uh, gets many of you so high who are probably watching this right now. Are you enjoying your bong rip? You know, uh, you know, I've got nothing against cannabis. Uh, I think it's uh, I think you use it too much. It makes you kind of dopey, but overall it's pretty harmless and it's good for the inflammation. You know, especially if you're doing kickboxing or boxing, uh, you know, use some of those CBDs. At least I was, you know, because uh, my muscles will just be so sore. But I don't really like being too high. Uh, regardless, let's not talk about any of that. It's a uh, doesn't matter. And it's not legal in all 50 states, so there's a statute of limitations, and I got an angry baby mama who's probably stalking me on this right now. Could use it against me. Regardless, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Uh, cannabis sativa. Uh, there's also there's another what is there? There's another cannabis species that they're trying to say. I don't know. There's there's indica, of course, sativa. Then there's another one you see in Nebraska. I can't remember the name of it. it begins with an R, I think. It may or may not be a species. The point is, this has been used by people for so fucking long and interbred. You know, the species delineations get a little funky sometimes. But this is the true plant. So it's crazy to think that human selective pressures, which is the really important thing to talk about, can turn this plant into a, what gets you so zonked right now. You know, hopefully you're not too zonked. Hopefully you're going to remember some of this tomorrow. You know, it's just like uh, poodles and wolves. Poodles and wolves are the same species, but over 10,000 years. And human selective pressure, which is, of course, quite different from environmental selective pressure, has turned uh, the wolf into the poodle and the Doberman Pinscher into neurotic cattle dog, etc. And uh, it has turned cannabis sativa into the fucking cookies or whatever, you know, 
shit that's got you so silly right now. You know, and it's just basically you grow a hundred seeds, you select one or two that's got the best qualities you're looking for, and then you breed those. You breed those with some more that have the best qualities you're looking for, and if you do that enough, you eventually get buds that are so enormous that it's breaking the branches off of the plant and the plant would never really survive in the wild because the flowers on it are so incredibly big and the terpenes that it exudes are so thick and resinous that it would mold uh, in nature in the humid environments which it's uh, uh, prone which it needs basically it, they're mostly from humid environments so uh, the point is human selective pressure is a real thing domestication is a real thing just like uh, wild aurochs which are now extinct in uh, North America have been turned into cattle, you know, wild aurochs were probably very smart, just like bison are. They were probably very smart and uh, didn't like being fucked with too bad, but uh, humans bred the smart out of them and turned them into basically, you know, mouth-breathing, uh, vapid morons. No offense to any cows out there, but that's, uh, that's basically what cattle are. I've hit them with a freight train before. It's knocked them uh, straight over. It's, uh, it's not a pretty sight, you know, especially when you get all the shit and the blood dripping off the cow catcher. Uh, which I guess <laughs> I guess just called the cow catcher for a reason. Humans bred them to be dumb uh, because they're easier to control as livestock animals. Much like uh, you know, the the more idiotic and uneducated people are, uh, the easier they're going to be to control as well. So it's very important to get an education out there and not spend all your time smoking dope and playing video games. You know, you could do that a little bit, I guess. I would never do it, but uh, you could do it a little bit. Just you know. Take some time out to read a fucking book or two once in a while, you know? Maybe drink some green tea on the side, too. Go for a fucking run, you know? Do some jump rope and punch the bag. What the fuck am I talking about? Let's keep moving on down here. Here we go. That's a catalpa. And these are a native tree, and they're gorgeous. They get fucking huge white flowers when they're blooming, going off. And they're actually, they're in the big noniaceae, which is a family that's mostly in the tropics, you know? Desert willow in the Mojave Desert, Chilopsis. You know, mostly a, it's a, not a riparian tree, but it needs more water. It's not, it's a desert plant, but it needs to grow in wetter areas in the desert or at least be tapped into a water source. Chilopsis, uh, not a true willow, called desert willow, has beautiful flowers, zygomorphic flowers, just like this. Very beautiful plant, and they're speckled. The inside of the perianth is speckled. Very beautiful tree. Okay, and then look at over here. You got the, the two non-native plants, of course, a lot of weeds and bullshit here. There's that uh, mellow lotus again, another non-native. Adarcus carota, Queen Anne's lace, APACA, same family as that parsnip. It's called wild carrot. Uh, I guess the roots are edible. I don't know. Who the fuck cares? But regardless, uh, and then this is Centauria stobi. Uh, Centauria, of course, is in the thistle subfamily of the uh, Asteraceae over there. Okay, and you can see, I mean, just look at all those phyleries. And uh, it's kind of, I mean... You kind of, it doesn't look much. It looks a little bit like a thistle, I guess, if you're a novice. So, uh, there you go. But this is actually, I think, from Italy, you know, which is one of the only countries I, I, I one of the only countries I like to go to, you know, if I get the chance to see if the people that live there, uh, you know, uh, are as neurotic and insane as uh, myself and that uh, that half of the family, you know, just see if it's a uh, genetic, you know, it's kind of a uh, experiment in uh, heredity and a. Uh, uh, genes and what this shit, you know, see if we're all crazy if they all, uh, you know, kind of off the cuff like that. Anyway, uh, again, in that tribe, in the thistle tribe, there are only three genera that are native to North America. So again, I think it's one or two dispersal events, maybe just one, I don't know. One or two dispersal events, they made it over here, probably in a plumage of a bird or something, however many millions of years ago, and then radiated, but then not many more came over. So uh, Circeum is the big genus in this, in this uh, uh, subfamily. And uh, basically anything that looks like a thistle that isn't one of the native Circeums, except for those other two genera, are, uh, are, uh, are non-native. Oh look, here's another Circeum, which absolutely looks invasive and non-native. But uh, you can see just how unappealing that would be to touch. But I'm going to go ahead and touch it anyways, because that's what I do. Oh yeah, that doesn't feel too good. Oh. I mean, some of the seeds on this are supposedly very good for uh, you know your liver you know so for any alcoholics out there you grind up some of those uh, milk thistle seeds put them in a powder and you know a lot of herbal medicine is bullshit but a lot is uh, legit too you know because plants are basically chemical factories you know the same compounds you might take in a multivitamin are just the synthesized version of something the plant already produces and maybe they're a little bit more concentrated maybe not i don't know but uh, this i guess there's actually some good research that milk thistle is good for your liver 
you know, which is also good if you go around eating strange mushrooms and you uh, accidentally ingest an amanita or something and you get that uh, liver failure, you know, and that's kind of what the amanitas do, at least the toxic ones. Some of the amanitas are choice mushrooms, but uh, others, of course, uh, contain deadly amatoxins and they make you gag and puke for a while and then you feel better and it's, oh, it's all just a ruse because the whole time your liver's dying. So you feel better for about eight or ten hours and then you die because your liver fails. But I guess, uh, you know, I guess uh, if you get any liver trouble, you get some of that, uh, some of those thistles, especially the, the one they call by the common name of milk thistle. Okay, yeah, one quick thing. I'm sure many of you know this already. But the odd thing about cannabis flowers, okay, this is a female and then over here you got a male. Uh, a staminate. Males are called staminate flowers. You can see them coming out. They're not open yet. But when they do, there's there's the stamens and anthers in there, and then the, these are called pistillate, of course. That's with any plant, not just weed. Uh, pistillate flowers uh, are the female flowers, and that is basically. Uh, God damn it! If you could see that, this camera doesn't want to focus. Those little hairs coming out, I believe, are the styles. You know, the point is they're they're meant to attract the pollen because this is, of course, wind pollinated. It's not the uh, it's not pollinated by insects. So anyway, got a male, god damn, it smells. That's going to be some bammer weed. Is that what they call it? Do they still call it bammer weed? Male and female plants next to each other. A lot of seeds. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's been growing here for goddamn 20 years, you know. And uh, I've never smoked uh, this stuff because you know, I'm not much of a weed guy, you know. I would dabble occasionally, but I never really liked it. It just got too weird. I'll do some CBD, though. But uh, regardless, it's pretty cool. It's still... Uh, Still doing well here, and they, I guess they just legalized it here in Illinois too. So we'll see where that goes, you know. Oh, uh, there's uh, I believe one of those little cottonwood seeds. How about that? Anyway, here's another uh, interesting plant. The sun's setting on my ass. I really gotta, you know, I gotta cut this out. The camera's not gonna, it's gonna stop focusing when it gets too dark. This is Onothra biennis, and it, it's a evening primrose. It's a native plant. And uh, it's got, uh, it's, it looks like shit right now. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe they, you know, I think the railroad comes by and they spray Roundup on all this shit to keep the road, the road clear. But, uh, or it's just, I mean, they got in enough rain. It shouldn't be looking like this right now. It looks like uh, herbicide damage. Regardless, this comes out covered when it does bloom. Uh, in, in none of the ones, even the ones on the north side weren't blooming yet. It's covered in uh, yellow flowers. Beautiful four-petaled yellow evening primrose family flowers. Holy shit, I haven't seen lightning bugs they're still alive. I can't believe uh, the Anthropocene hasn't killed everything yet. <laughs> I don't see these too many anymore. I grew up with them, but, uh, you know, a lot of the lightning bugs have just kind of disappeared, you know? And I guess that's, uh, you know, what most people want. They'd rather have the convenience of a fucking, you know, just having people and concrete everywhere instead of uh, seeing the nice stuff to, uh, like uh, lightning bugs at the makes you feel a little bit less homicidal about how terrible the world can be. Anyway, uh, I digress. On out there, Bianis, evening primrose family. A lot of good uh, speciation out here. There's uh, another species begins with a G. I'm kind of getting pre senile uh, geriatric here. Can't remember it off the top of my head. But on out there, look for the flowers when they come out. You could see one of the things with the uh, Onothras is they get the inferior ovary. The whole family does. So, and it's kind of like a little tube shaped thing. So, uh, and you could see it, that stalk will turn into a seed capsule and then uh, the flower will come out. Right about there. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Hope you had a nice time. Uh, go fuck yourself and uh, have a lovely evening.